Shalom, Shalom Israel. I'm an Israelite. I come in as often as possible to prophesy the downfall of this uh, demonic kingdom. Firstly, I want to give infinite glory and praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Waha, Raka Kodash. The Most High's name is Yahweh, which means He exists, He is. Bahashem means what? Means in the name. Yahweh Shai means He deliverer. And I'm back out here again through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shim to uh, teach this uh, beautiful word. Because what? Because what did the angel tell? John the Revelator in um, the island of uh, Patmos he told him, he said, the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. And what's the function of a prophet? Uh, the function of a prophet is to say future events before they actually occur, before they actually happen. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to get the precept in the verse that really goes into detail on that. Okay, because, you know, sometimes solitariness makes you stronger, makes you a stronger person that believes in the Lord, being solitary, right? Because um, if you analyze it, right, you might be in a situation where you might be on your own in uh, the time of um, Jacob's trouble, but guess what? You're not alone, because what did Elijah say? Elijah said, they that be with us are more than they that be with them. So you're meant to be uh, courageous and have faith until the end. So, going straight into it, right? Let me carry on reading. Let's let this vehicle go, because we can see this truck. This truck is, uh, let me loosen this out a bit. Okay, so, this is Revelation chapter 19, starting at verse 10, it says, And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not. Yeah, so the holy angel said, you're not meant to worship him. That was the situation of what the holy angel said. He said, you're not meant to worship him. He said, I'm your brother. You're not meant to worship me. He says, see thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship Yahweh for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. Okay? So the testimony of Yahweh Shai, what is the spirit of prophecy? And that's what we're doing when we're out here, man. We're prophesying the downfall of this wicked kingdom through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. We're addressing and letting people know because we are an evident token of tradition that this kingdom is going to fall. And I'm going to read that inside the scriptures, right? We're an evident token of tradition that this kingdom, this place, is going to fall through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Okay. This is the book of Philippians, chapter 1, starting at verse 28. It says, And in nothing terrified by your adversaries. So, you're not meant to be afraid of those, your enemies. You're not be, meant to be afraid of them. You're meant to have the spirit of boldness. So, you're not afraid of them. It says, Which is to them an evident token of perdition I, and this symbolizes an evident token of perdition to the heathen nations okay this represents what the downfall of their kingdom and when you see brothers out there on the streets standing it's, it's symbolic to show that there's going to be what a transition of kingdoms all right it's going to be a transition of empires this empire that you see right now, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shimei Al Shai, is going to pass away. There's going to be what? There's going to be an everlasting kingdom. And that everlasting kingdom is going to be infinite. It's going to be eternal. This kingdom, everything that you see, is going to be passed away, man. Everything that you see right now is going to be taken away. This place ain't going to last forever. Yahweh Shai's kingdom is going to be the kingdom that's going to stand. This place is going to go. Uh, it says heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. So that basically means that the, the Lord's words is what's going to stand, man. That's why you have to be mentally strong and solitary. Because in, when the RFID chip comes out, 
how is your mindset going to be in that time? Are you going to be afraid, oh, a brother's not next to me, so I'm scared? Or are you going to have a courageous mindset? Are you going to have a mindset of being strong, of having faith? So it says the fearful and the unbelieving, they're not going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, I'm not saying that our physical strength is what's going to save us, but we're meant to have a mindset of having faith in the Lord and believing that He's going to be the one to guide us and give us that strength. So it's very essential and important that we do understand that, man. All right? It's very essential and important. And the Lord is not uh, surprised in any man's greatness. The Lord is not going to be like, wow, this guy has been inside the ministry for 10 years or 15 years or such and such amount of years. The Lord is not surprised at your image, how popular you are to other people. The Lord is not surprised in that. All right? Let me get it real quick. I believe it's in Wisdom of Solomon. Let's get it. Alright, so this is the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, starting at verse 7. It really says, For he which is Lord over all shall fear no man's person. So Yahushua is not afraid of any man's person. He's not afraid of whether you're popular or whether you're known. The Lord, ain't, the Lord ain't surprised in that. He says, neither shall he stand in awe of any man's greatness. The Lord ain't gonna be surprised in the greatness that you're in. He's not gonna move in the spirit of, wow, this guy is part of this uh, uh, camp, so I'm gonna have, um, I'm gonna treat him differently to other people. The Lord ain't surprised in your greatness. All right, the Lord created you, so why would he be surprised in your greatness? He's not going to be surprised in that. For he have made the small and the great and careth for all alike. He cares for all his elect the same. He's not going to have someone and say, you know, this guy's part of this camp and this guy's part of that camp. But because I like him more, I'm going to choose him over him. The Lord is fair. When you see a balance scale, you see both sides balanced. You don't see one side down and the other side up. The law doesn't like something that's imbalanced. It has to be fairly measured. Alright? What is the same point? It says a false balance is an abomination to the Lord. And I don't worry about what people say about oh, uh, all these bad words about me and all the gossipers because the Bible tells me, it says nothing that is hidden will not be revealed. So all the slanderers, all the gossipers, all those that have been chitty chatty, there's going to be a time that I'm going to find out. So, let me get it, man. Let me get it. Alright. This is the book of Luke, chapter 8, verse 17. It says, For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. So you can hide as much as you can, but it's soon going to be revealed, man. He says what? It says open rebuke is better than secret love. And that's why uh, me and the brother Aidan, we uh, made um, a video. It was basically called uh, Social and Brotherly Discussions, episode two. And we, we openly said and said, listen, if you have any kind of disagreement with what is being said, you can jump on the comment board and actually quote the reason to why you dislike um, what is being said. Because if you're coming to represent the Lord, if you're coming to represent Yahweh Shai, you have to make sure that you move decently, that your speech, that your language is not vulgar or vile. You have to have self-discipline. Because if you're coming to represent the Lord, you have to make sure that you conduct yourself in a certain way because there's different positions inside this uh, gospel but one thing 
that I realized in Israel is that they follow a multitude to do evil. You're following people, man. And that's one, one commandment that the Most High doesn't like. Moving in the spirit of following a multitude to do iniquity. The Lord ain't dealing with that kind of spirit of following a multitude to do wickedness. Okay? Okay, this is Exodus chapter 23, starting at verse 2, it says, Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to arrest judgment. So you're not meant to move in the spirit of following a multitude to do evil. You're not meant to move in that spirit, man. You're meant to move in the spirit of, of righteousness, of seeking after righteousness, not seeking after wickedness. Because if you're seeking after wickedness, what's going to happen is that ultimately you're going to be in a bad predicament. That's why it's very essential that we repent and we change of our ways. Because the kind of uh, fury and anger that the Lord is coming with, He's coming to deal with the ungodly. He's coming to deal with those that don't want to repent, that want to carry on in wickedness, that want to carry on being wicked. Okay, so it's very important that we change of our ways and that we behave in a certain correct manner because if we don't behave in a certain correct manner what is going to happen is that there's going to be a bad situation and that's the reason why how should I say what? Repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand and that's what's going to happen man because all hell is about to break loose inside the system man it's going to be really yeah, I'm on live, yeah. Hi, live. Huh? Hi, live. You're right. They said hello. Hi. <laughs> See, you never know, man. The most time might have mercy on you. You're going to be famous, yeah? You're right. Good, man. But, yeah, she's talking about how, you know, she's going to be uh, famous. Man, they, anyway, they're playing around. I'm not going to condemn them. I'm not going to condemn them because they never came in a bad energy to me. If you come politely, listen, it's not my duty to condemn someone, bro. My duty is to basically teach the word of the Lord and tell people to repent. I'm not out here to tell people the Most High is going to kill you, the Most High is going to destroy you. That's not my duty. If you read the scriptures, what, what Yahweh Shai was saying, Yahweh Shai said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I'm not out here to, to start, you know, judging people and telling people, ah, oh, the most high gonna kill you, the most high gonna do this and that. You know, and they look nice, you know. They came humble, you know. And, you know, that's why I'm saying that, you know, people that have issues with women is because, you know, you go just work on yourself, bro. Like, if you, if you go to the gym and you exercise and take care of your body, women will come to you it's just that you have to just take, make, make the step in and focus on yourself and once you focus on yourself and have self-improvement it will happen you know the holy angels are not overweight they, they have a healthy body Yahweh Shia was looking healthy you can't call yourself a follower of the Lord and then your body just looks horrible you have to take care of your body your body is the temple of the most high you have to treat your body with care. You have to care for your body. You have to exercise, go to the gym. You know, even if you can't go to the gym, do some kind of daily exercise. Even if you don't exercise, be cautious and careful of what you eat. You understand? Be cautious and careful. And you know, you know what's crazy? Even though brothers are not standing with me, I still feel like they're with me in the spirit. I still feel that because at the end of the day it's like hey man that time is soon coming where things are about to get very intense okay things are about to get very uh serious okay people are about to be tested man not only are they about to be tested but they're about to be uh it's about to be hot out here man and how it's going to be hot is that 
there's gonna be a time where you know shit is gonna get real. So this is Matthew chapter 18 verse 7 it says go unto the world because of their offenses for it must needs be that offenses must come but woe to the man to that man by whom the offenses cometh yeah woe unto the world man what does that mean woe unto the world woe unto the world basically means right that a lot of things are about to happen on earth People are about to be tried. People are about to be tested. And what we're meant to do is we're meant to show a good example. If we're calling ourselves teachers, prophets, evangelists, whatever position you are inside this gospel, we're meant to move in the right energy, the right spirit. That's why it's very, very important that you move in the spirit of Yahweh Shai. If Yahweh Shai was standing right next to you, would you speak the same way you're speaking? You know, because I know I'm a sinner and I hope that the Most High forgives me for my sins. I pray that the Lord forgives me, even though I haven't been praying as much. I pray that Yahweh Shai has mercy on me for my sins. See? Because the Lord, in the day of judgment, it's not going to be... It's not going to be... Uh, the brother standing on your right or on your left with you. It's going to be you and the Lord. It's going to be you and Yahweh Shai in the day of judgment. You're going to be standing there. Do you feel like you're worthy enough to receive salvation? Do you believe that you're worthy enough to even make it into uh, uh, the kingdom of heaven? And this is why it's very essential that we reflect on ourselves and we check ourselves you understand it's very very important that we move in that kind of way but yeah so there's test to this thing and when that mark of the beast comes are you going to be strong enough mentally to overcome that mark because the victory has already been written it's just that there's going to be a small portion of people that are going to receive that victory. So what I'm going to do, right, is I'm going to read Revelation 15 and go into detail on who received the uh, victory. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 15, starting at verse 1. It says, And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues for in them is filled up the wrath of God and everyone on earth is going to be judged according to their works man no one is going to escape the judgment of the most high everyone on earth is going to have to experience the judgment that the Lord is about to bring whether you've done good or whether you've done evil you are going to have to give account man no one is going to escape the judgment of the Lord, man. Whether you're on his good side or whether you're on his bad. And what's going to happen is that if you're on the Lord's bad side, you're going to be put inside a bad situation. And in this case scenario, most people are put inside the Lord's bad side, man. Revelation chapter 15, starting at verse 2, it says, And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire. And that's what? That's the elect up there in space and when they're up there in space they're going to be standing on a physical sea of glass in space it says mingling with fire that mingling of fire is what is america being destroyed so the elect are going to be abducted once they get abducted inside that spaceship they're going to see america burning in fire and when they see america burning in fire what's going to happen let's carry on reading he says, and I saw a sea, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast. The beast goes into detail of NATO and the EU. NATO being what? The North Atlantic uh, Treaty Organization, because NATO is just an acronym for that. 
the EU is what is the European Union, which NATO has to do with what the military side of things, and the EU has to do with the what the political side of things. It says, and over is Mark. The Mark is what is the Karagma, the RFID chip, the microchip. That's the Mark, right? And over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. All right? So you're going to have men out there standing on the sea of glass, physically looking through that glass of America burning with fire. And it's only going to be a remnant that's going to actually uh, be survivors to actually see this actually occur. It's only going to be a small portion of Israelites who are actually going to see this happen. It's not going to be a massive amount of Israelites who are going to see this happen, man. It's only going to be a small portion. Okay? So that's something that we have to understand. It's only going to be a small portion of Israelites who are actually going to see this uh, first uh, resurrection that's coming. So let me go to the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 32, right? Because I want to back for why I said it. It's going to be a small portion of Israelites that will be saved. Because when you read the book of Joel, chapter 2, starting at verse 32, it says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon, call on the name of Yahweh shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant of whom the Lord shall call. And it's only going to be a small portion of Israelites that are going to be saved. Amongst you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, there's only going to be a small remnant, which the word remnant, if you go into that word remnant, it means what it means, survivors. There's only going to be a small portion of survivors that are going to be saved. The rest of other Israelites are not going to make it, man. Because why? Because ultimately, they have been preordained to be blind. Okay? So, yeah, it says, As the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. The Lord is going to call a remnant. He's going to call a small portion. There's only going to be a small portion of you Jakes that are going to make it. All right? Which contains what? The, the 144,000 and the innumerable multitude, the great multitude. All right? The 144,000 contains 12,000 of each tribe. So 12,000 times 12 will give you the equivalent equals to 144,000. That's what, that's the tabernacle of David. And then you're also going to have what? You're also going to have um, the great multitudes. The great multitude are also uh, part of the elect. But there's, um, there's a hierarchy to this thing. And the tabernacle of David are going to be fighting uh, Esau and his army. The robots and all these things. They're going to fight the army. Okay. And... Uh, Spiritual power is going to come before the Lord returns. And also, one thing I was meditating on as well is that I'm not saying I am someone, but if I was someone in reincarnation, a lot of people wouldn't be treating me the way they're treating me right now. But the Lord likes to shock people, man. Because if I was who I, someone in reincarnation, someone powerful, people wouldn't be speaking anyhow. But I like the way the Lord has made this story. So anyways, carrying on reading to it. So the Most High is going to give his elect spiritual power. You know you're an Israelite? You see? And that's why, you know, when we try to warn our people and let them know that they're Israelites, they reject the information. Alright, so this is a... Uh, Isaiah chapter 59, starting at verse 19, it says, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west 
and his glory from the rising of the sun. The sun rises from the east unto the west, man. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against them. All right, so when the Most High is going, when the enemy comes in like a flood, and that's what's gonna happen. You're gonna have the military come after what? The men of, the hopeful men of the Lord. And what's gonna happen is that that spiritual power is gonna be seen. Because when the military comes after the men of Yahweh Shimi al that's when the spiritual power is gonna be seen, man. Okay, and that's gonna be the biggest mistake for the British army. It's gonna be the biggest mistake for the forces of this world, man. And also, not only are we fighting against this uh, system, we're also fighting against demons, unclean spirits. We're fighting against the villains of God. All right, because Satan is out there. Satan is very crafty, he's very uh, manipulative. Satan is a very manipulative spirit. And he has his demons out there in the invisible realm and they're out there causing all manner of chaos because there's an unseen world that you can't see the human eyes cannot see the unseen realm the human eyes can only see the seen realm but in the unseen realm there's spirits out there all right and i have a testimony as well this was a, a couple years back. Um, I was in my bed one time, uh, chilling. And then what happened was that uh, when I was chilling inside my bed, I heard this uh, spirit, you know, fighting against me. And basically, you know, I felt weakness, but I, I was calling upon the name of Yahweh Bahashim Shai. I was saying, Kahala Yinla, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. And then what happened was that this unclean spirit told me and said, do you not know that I'm a villain of God? That's what the spirit told me. And I said to the spirit, I rebuke you in the name of Yahweh Shimei al -Shai. And when I heard the that the unseen realm is real, but it just confirmed to me that the unseen realm world is, is, is real. So in this system, they'll classify people that have demons with uh, schizophrenia. They say that they have uh, mental problems. Um, they have a uh, mental illness. But you cannot use medications to remove an unclean spirit from someone. Some people have unclean spirits on them and they need exorcism. And that's what Yahweh Shai was doing. Yahweh Shai was performing exorcism to remove demons from people to remove principalities from people right, and i'm gonna get the account where how i was actually removing you know demons from uh people and you know one of the methods on uh, on removing uh, unclean spirits is by the way of fasting and prayer when you fast and pray that's another method that's another tool of removing unclean spirits so what i'm gonna do right is I'm going to get the account of um, Yahweh Shai, our Lord, removing um, unclean spirits from someone. So let me get it. Uh, this is the book of Mark. Let's read Mark, right? This is the book of St. Mark, chapter 5, starting at verse 1. It says, And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately them met him out of the tomb, a man with an unclean spirit. Yeah, this man had a demon on him, a devilish spirit. It says, who had his dwelling among the tomb and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because sometimes when people have demons on them, they have supernatural strength. They can push you and a wall will, will break, man. It says, because that he had 
been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him so imagine this man had chains on his on his wrist and the demon was so powerful on him to the point where he used his hands to remove the chains so the, de the it, it was it was a powerful demon that was on him that gave him so much strength to remove the chains that were on his hands it says broken in pieces neither could any man tame him yeah because you know that demon that was on him was so powerful was so strong it says and always night and day he was in the mountain and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones you see the demon was on him where you know he was cutting himself man and that's what you see some of these people in mental homes what do they do they grab a knife and start cutting themselves you know you check their arm all you see is cuts on their skin because they, they got demons on them but the doctor is giving them pills not actually they don't have the supernatural power to perform exorcism so because they don't have the supernatural power to perform exorcism they're drugging them out with these pills man and these pills are not solving the issue because they need uh, exorcism but through the power of Yahabah Shimei al -Shai. It says, uh, and always, so this is Mark chapter 5 verse um, 5, it says, and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tomb crying and cutting himself with stones. But when Yahweh but when he saw Yahweh afar, he ran and worshipped him. And he, and cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee, Yahweh thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by power that thou torment me not because Yahweh Shai was on a high spiritual level you see when you're on a high spiritual level demons are afraid of you they know who you are in the unseen realm you know when you're on a high spiritual level the you know people in this world might not know you but the holy angels and the demons know who you are you know you might be not famous in this world, but you're famous in the heavenly world, man. You know, you might have brothers on earth, you know, we're not famous. You might not be famous on earth, but in, in the heavens, your name is being mentioned all the time. You know, this world might reject us, but the world to come will accept us. So it says, uh, Mark chapter 5 verse 8 it says For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. So you had a massive amount of spirits that were on this man. Alright? And Yahweh Shai said, Come out of him, right? It says, And he asked him, What is thy name? And he said, he answered saying, my name is Legion for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was nigh unto the mountain a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him saying, send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And that's what happened man. Those unclean spirits entered into the pigs. So there is an invisible realm. There is an unseen realm, man. And there's angels, holy angels standing with me right now. Whether you believe it or not, there's a lot of angels, holy angels standing with me right now. So many of them standing right here, but it's just that your eyes can't see them. Okay? Because I see them a lot of times, man, up there in the sky. I look up in the sky, I see them shining light at me you know when i look up in the sky i see angels holy angels flashing light hovering around i'll see them in fleets fleets of holy angels just hovering to and fro you know the most high has shown me so many angels man i've seen over uh, uh, uh um i've seen over five six hundred angels in the sky man 
something like five, six, seven hundred holy angels flying in the sky. Okay? So don't worry about this world. This world is going to perish. This world is going to go. The world to come is eternal. Okay? And forthwith Yahweh Shai gave them leave. And the unclean spirit went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. So the demons entered inside the pigs. And then what happened was that the demons actually made the pigs commit suicide. And that's what, uh, you know, happens with people. Sometimes you might see people commit suicide, but, you know, you don't even understand the reason why those pigs commit uh, suicide, man. The reason why those pigs, uh, sorry, the reason why those people commit suicide is because they have a demon on them. That demon of suicide, man. And that demon of suicide can make people commit suicide, man. Sometimes, you know, you watch a movie of someone grabbing a gun and shooting themselves in the head. You know, but if you were to see the invisible realm, you would see some spirit with sharp teeth and claws whispering inside his ear, telling him to commit suicide. But because you can't see the unseen realm, all you're seeing is someone hold the gun and shoot themselves in the head. Because the people of this world they are carnal, man. Which the word carnal goes back into the word physical. They only deal with what they can see. They cannot understand what they cannot see. And that's why Yahweh Shai said, Blessed are they that see, that have not seen and still believe. And that's going to be what our, our, our stability in the time of trouble, the wisdom, knowledge and understanding is going to be our stability in the time of trouble very important that we understand that okay and also as well um there's a verse i also really wanted to go into because um i've been like doing research on a lot of things that's been going on uh, i've been doing research on um you know elon musk I've been doing research in the music industry as well. I've been doing research in all these different things. And um, I remember, uh, you right? I remember a couple videos back, I said how, um, I said how Yahweh Shai, sorry, I said how uh, one of the reasons why people have arguments a lot of the time is due to the fact of women and money. And um, I was doing my research on, uh, I was doing my research on Chris Brown and uh, apparently he has an issue with uh, this guy called Takeoff, well sorry, um, Quavo and apparently it's over a woman and then you have the rapper Drake he also has an issue with um, with uh, Rick Ross over a woman and a lot of the times what you see with uh, Israelites even though they're in the world they're irrelevant what you see a lot of the times that even though they have money what you see is um, Jake is always fighting over woman and money. Woman and money is the, one of the main reasons why Jake is always having arguments. Even though Jake has money and they can get any woman that they want, they still argue with those things. So it really shows you that when you don't have your house shy, you're under what? The curses. So let me get it real quick. So let me get the verse real quick. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to read um, the Good News Bible because one thing about uh, sorry, is my camera acting weird? 
because one thing I realized about the King James Bible, right, is that sometimes the King James doesn't really go into detail on, uh, like, because we're speaking modern English, sometimes it can be hard to understand the King James. So what I'm going to do, right, is I'm going to read the Good News Bible for you to really understand um, what is being said. So bear with me one second and I'm going to go into that. So... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read 1st Ezra 4. Okay. Okay, 1st Ezra 4, right? 1st Ezra chapter 4. I'm going to start at verse 12. Okay, this is the Good News Bible. Okay. First Ezra chapter 4, starting at verse um, 13, right? This is what it says. It says, The bodyguard who had written about women and the truth, it was Zerubbabel, spoke last. This is the Good News Bible, by the way. It says, Gentlemen, he began, the emperor is certainly powerful. Men are numerous and wine is strong, but whose rules and control but who rules and control them all? It is women. Women gave birth to the emperor and all the men who rule over the land and sea. Women brought them into the world. Women brought up the men who planted the vineyards from which wine comes. Women make the clothes that men wear. Women bring honor to men. In fact, without women, men couldn't live. And that's why you have some simps out there. They can't live without women, man. They will literally fight you. They will literally beat you up. They will literally try to do anything for that. And, you know, very important this. Men may accumulate silver and gold or other beautiful things. But if they see a, a woman with a pretty face or a good figure, they will leave it all to gape and stare and they will desire her more than their wealth. You got some men out there, you know, they work all hours of their life. They'll be working so hard, so much shift, and all the money that they have, they just give it to a woman. It's all in the Bible. Everything is inside this book. The Bible explains life. If you want to talk about how to not be a simp, the Bible gives you advice on how not to be a simp, okay? So this is 2nd Ezra, 1st Ezra chapter 4, verse 1 and verse 18, Good News Bible. Men may accumulate silver or gold or other beautiful things, but if they see a woman with a pretty face or a good figure, they will leave it all to gape and stare, and they will desire her more than their wealth. A man will leave his own father who brought him up and leave his own country to get married. He will forget his father, his mother, and his country to spend the rest of his life with his wife. And that's what happens when all these guys who leave you know, their wives and join these women, okay? It says, so you must recognize that women are your masters. Don't you work and sweat? So it says, so you must recognize that women are your masters. Don't you work and sweat? and then take all that you have earned and give it to your wives don't work hard sweat man and all the money that you have you're gonna give it to this woman you know a man will take his sword and go out to attack rob and steal and sell the seas and rivers let me read that again because this bus is making a lot of noise with the engine okay let me read that again says, a man will take his sword and go out to attack, rob and steal, and sell the seas and river. Like all these trap niggas, man. All these trap niggas, all these uh, fraudsters, online fraudsters. Okay, what do they do, man? They, they, they dive, they take massive amounts of risks. 
just to please their woman because the whole reason why they get that um, that McLaren, that Bugatti, that Lamborghini car okay the reason why they do all these things is really to impress the woman it says he may have the, to face lions to travel in in the dark but when he has robbed stolen and plundered he will bring the loot home to the woman he loves yeah so you know i remember that a uh, woman called uh, sexy red she said that her, her boyfriend used to steal it's funny i said uh I said Ferrari and look now a Ferrari came up Well, who cares about that Well the point is that it says a woman How a guy will steal So Sexy Red she had a man right And that man Basically what will happen Is that he would basically now uh, uh, Steal From someone and give it to his girl And that's what happens It says um he may have to face lions to travel in the dark, but when he has robbed, stolen, and plundered, he will bring the loot home to the woman he loves. A man loves his wife more than his parents. Some men are driven out of their minds on account of a woman, and others become slaves for the sake of a woman, right? Because what happens is that a lot of these men are becoming slaves to these women. Huh? You got a man being a simp, a woman will spit inside his mouth. Okay, that's being a high level amount of sip. Okay. That's being a sip, man. Now you got these effeminate men not being strong. It says others have been put to, to death, have ruined their lives, or have committed crimes because of a woman, right? They've been put to death for these honey traps. You got Bobby Bobby Schmurder saying, um, I'm gonna send a little thack to put a drop on him. What does that mean? You know, he's gonna send a girl to speak to one of his uh, rival gang members, and then when that girl speaks to that rival gang, well, when that girl speaks to the, the rival gang member, then the rival gang is gonna pull up on them and shoot them. So this is what goes on inside this system, man. The Bible speaks about these things, man. So when people say, oh, the Bible is boring, you know, then why does the book, why does the book thousands of years ago speak about what's happening right now? It's all inside this book, man. Yeah. Honey traps is spoken of in the Bible. All these things are spoken of inside the book, man. You know, so all you guys don't believe in the book, the Bible, you're going to find out that it's the truth. You're going to find out that your religion is a fraud and the truth is King James Version Bible, which goes back to what Yahweh Shai being the whole volume of this book, man. So now you believe me? The Emperor's power is certainly great. No nation has the courage to attack him. Saying the Emperor is powerful, right? People don't have, you know, the courage to attack him. But let's read on. It says, But once I saw him with Apami, his concubine, the daughter of the famous Bartacus, while she was sitting at the emperor's right, she took his crown off his hat, his head, put it on her own, and he then slaps his face with her hand. So imagine, you know, you have an emperor, right? He can command soldiers. He can tell the soldiers, slay a thousand men for me. Slay two thousand men for me. But as soon as he was with this concubine called Apami, you know, you're right. When as soon as he was with this concubine called Apami, right? She took his crown and put it on her head. She started to slap him with the left hand. And the left hand is the hand that you used to clean your backside. It says, all the emperors did, all the emperor did was look at her with his mouth open. Like, like wow. You know, his mouth was open like wow imagine an emperor that controls nations all this concubine did was take a crown put it on her head slap him with the left hand and he was just like you know it says all the emperor did was look at her with his mouth open whenever she smiles at him he smiles back 
and when she gets angry with him he flatters her and teases her until she is in a good mood again and that's not that's not going to happen anymore man because a lot of these women they want you to be in a good if they're not in a good mood they want you not to be in a good mood when they're happy they want you to be happy no nah, man fuck that shit man just because you're in a bad mood you're not gonna make me in a bad mood okay and that's why uh polygamy is gonna be something that's gonna come out right now polygamy is soon coming polygamy what polygamy is basically when one man has multiple women and a lot of these footballers and basketballers they don't have polygamy now in as much as they have so much money it doesn't happen but polygamy is soon coming okay and let me carry on reading it says uh gentlemen if women can do all that surely there can be nothing stronger in the world the emperor and his officials just looked at one another like you know the emperors and the officials they were looking at each other like right this, this guy got a point he got a point and that's the truth yeah then Zerubba began to speak about truth yes gentlemen he says women are very strong but think how big the earth is how high the sky is yeah and it's going to something else but the point of the matter is is that that's what it talks about they want you to be a to be their slave you know you might have a woman say darling i want to go on holiday let's take the vac take the vaccine and you're going to take the vaccine in your right arm because she tells you to or she might tell you oh you know everyone else is traveling you know that just take the microchip so that we can travel to different parts of the world and you're going to have some men they're going to take the chip because of the woman around them is rubbing their chest telling them to take the chip look what happened to great men great men have fallen by them man look at uh, the uh, samson look at king david look at king solomon okay even look at um pharaoh in egypt man it was a woman that brought moses in and that same baby was the one that will make the egyptians the fool so women have always made men fool man and that's why you know in jacob's trouble you might not be in the spirit of one of them because there might be a uh a liability in that time you know but I believe through the spirit that when the men of the Lord receive the spiritual power they're not gonna say a word man they're gonna be scared and that's the reason why order is meant to come because when you analyze the Arabs their women are in order man when you look at the Arabs their women are in order. You don't see the Arab woman making a rap music or hip hop. Have you ever seen an Arab Cardi B or an Arab Nicki Minaj? Because their woman is in their right mind. Once you destroy the woman inside the nation, then you destroy the whole nation. And that's why uh, Esau, all right, is pushing for the woman to be dysfunctional because once you can do that you can destroy the whole nation because they're the ones that raise up the children you know have you ever seen uh you know the arab woman be disrespectful to, to the man no but you see that in the israelite household because there's no order man okay because you're meant to your, your wife is meant to be afraid of you man your woman is meant to be scared of you to some extent i'm not saying that you know she should be trembling and scared and stuff not like a weirdo but a lot of these um arab women they're afraid of their husbands so they don't disrespect their husband even these are uh, somalian women as well 
they're afraid of their husbands. They don't disrespect their husbands, man. But there's only one nation of women that say niggas ain't shit. But why is that? Because we're not in the time of our power. But when that spiritual power gets seen, that's when respect is going to be seen, man. That's when respect is going to be seen. You know? Because right now, disrespect is taking place. But very, very soon, respect is going to take place. Because this whole shit is going down. All this shit is going down, man. All these buildings that you see, all of this is going down. You understand? The missiles are going to wipe this place out. And the elites are going to be running inside their underground bunkers, man. Because they move in that serpent spirit. And there's a thing called what? There's a thing called a, 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 a sea snake. And a sea snake... A sea snake likes to uh, dive into the waters, man. But even though they run inside the waters, they're still going to get caught. Okay? Even though they hide inside the waters, man. So let's go into it, man. Let's go into Amos real quick, right? This is the book of Amos, chapter 9, starting at verse 2. It says, Though they dig into hell, then shall my hand take them. So even if they have their underground bunkers, the Lord is still going to catch them. It says, Though they climb up to heaven, then will I bring them down. So even if they go up there in the sky, the Lord is still going to bring them down. It says, And though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, because they have uh, these uh, aquatic um, bunkers they have buildings inside the ocean you know these Rothschilds, Rockefellers they have buildings inside the water deep inside the water deep 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 inside the water they have buildings there man cities you know a water city it says and though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea then so I command the serpent and he shall bite them and that's what the Lord is going to bring out man Leviathan man which people call Godzilla the Lord going to bring out Leviathan that powerful creature man okay which there's only one Leviathan if you read scriptures you know there's only one Leviathan there's not multiple Leviathan man, because scripture tells you that Leviathan and Bohemoth that if you put them, that you can't put both of them inside the sea. That means that Leviathan is so huge, you can't put him inside the water, man. So I know brothers teach that uh, there's multiple Leviathans, but there's only one. Because the Bible tells you that there's only one Leviathan, man. Okay? If you read that in, in, the, in the Apocrypha, it says Bohemoth and Leviathan, you cannot put both of them inside the, the sea. Because they're huge. Okay? And that's what the Most High is going to do. He's going to display His power. Okay? That spiritual power. I had the dream uh, way back. You know, that dream I had was the, the army was chasing me when I was flying in the air. And then what happened was um, I flew over to West Africa, man. You know, the, 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 arm, the, the Air Force was chasing me when I, when I was flying in the sky. And what happened was... Um, you know, I was just flying in the air whilst the army was chasing me, man. And I went into one of my uh, uncle's houses, man. That was a dream I had uh, a couple years back. You know, there's even one dream I had of me flying and the building was on fire and I, I used my mouth to, uh, to spit ice, man. And that's what's gonna happen. The Lord is gonna uh, give his men that power to to do miracles. I'm not talking about, you know, these fake, fake miracles. I'm talking about real miracles of uh, turning water into wine, you know, doing massive miracles that will surprise the eyes of people. You know, that's what the Lord is going to do. He's going to make these men to do massive miracles, man. And these miracles are what are going to surprise the eyes of people. These miracles are, are going to um, open the eyes of people, man. 
miracles are going to be used to make people uh, believe because there's some elect out there that are going to believe when they see the miracles. There's some elect out there that when they see the miracles, that's the time that they're going to start believing. So that time is soon coming. That's why I'm very careful of saying, oh, the Lord did it, the Lord did it. Because when the Lord was healing people, he wasn't saying, oh, I'm the one that did it, I'm the one that did it. He was just healing people. So it's very important that we move in the spirit of not being able to just uh, automatically judge people, man. We're not meant to move in that spirit of, of, of judging people and moving in the energy of just, you know, uh, 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 condemning people. That's not the spirit the Lord is dealing with, man. The Lord ain't dealing with the spirit of, 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 uh, of judging people, man. You gotta move in the energy of, of uh, doing the right thing. And that's why Yahweh Shimei Asher is giving the spirit on his men to endure these last days, man. So it's very, very important that we move in the right spirit. Not giving dates when the Lord returns. Okay, not saying uh, people will suck your uh, private parts. Okay, not using vulgar and bad languages. Not being a respecter of persons. Not being tale-bearers or gossipers or, um, you know, uh, fake. But being honest, man. Because if you have an issue with somebody and you keep on gossiping to other people and not tell the person directly, how is that person going to readjust? This is why we have to be very direct. Okay? Not spoiling the minds of people. Okay? And I love it, man. I love being out here doing this man it's beautiful i love it man i've been doing this thing for years and years and years so it's a beautiful thing man i enjoy it because at the end of the day this makes you stronger man you know being solitary makes you strong when you have your how about shimmy i'm shining inside you become strong with the lord all things are possible That's why you're going to endure hardness as a good soldier. Do you know that you're an Israelite? That's why our women don't listen to us, man. When we try to educate them and tell them. But when society collapses, that's when things are going to be said. Because right now they ignore us as if we don't exist. But when the system collapses, we're going to ignore them. Because this system is still going down. Israelite men, Israelite women. Because I've told a lot of our men, do you know you're an Israelite? They reject it. Told a lot of our women, do you know you're an Israelite? They reject it. So that's their situation. You understand? Because the Lord is coming to bring, because really you're not rejecting me teaching this word. You're rejecting the Most High. Because the Most High is stretching out his hand and people don't want to take heed to his word. That's the reason why the Most High is going to get rid of this place because the wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth. No one is escaping the judgment of the Lord, man. Because when lockdown was happening, every, all the Bibles were gone. It's going to be too late to open up that Bible and go to the book of Revelation. It's going to be too late to open up the book and go into, you know, uh, uh, the Apocrypha. It's going to be too late, man. Because once once the famine of the word hits, it's going to be hard to hear the word, man. When society collapses, that's when people are going to be wandering to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, man. And they're not going to be able to find it. That's why I take the word early. Because very soon, you're not going to see me out here. When this system falls, you're not going to see me out here. People are going to be wandering to and fro to seek the word of Yahweh, Shimei al Shai and they're not gonna find it, okay? Okay? All right. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 17, verse one. 
and all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journey according to the commandment of Yahweh and pitched in Rephidim and there was no water for the people to drink and that was referring to the ancient world but you know the water in this present time is going to be the words and the word is going to be hard to find man no water to drink the word is going to be hard to find right verse 2 says wherefore the people did chide with Moses and said give us water that we may drink all right and that's what people are going to be doing inside the world they give us the truth man that we may understand man what's going to happen it says and Moses said unto them why chide ye me wherefore do ye tempt the Lord so we're going to be like why are you asking me man why are you trying to put me in trouble because we ain't going to be breaking down Bible verses when all hell break loose you know buy it for yourself you see this word buy it for yourself man this oil buy it for yourself go to those that that, that buy man I'm not giving my oil okay I'm keeping my oil to myself you can go out there and, and buy because I need to get ready for the wedding man I need to get ready for the wedding so if you do not understand the word at that time buy it for yourself because it's time for me to preserve the oil and get ready for the wedding man I'm not trying to be a foolish virgin out here man you know because you had that saying the five uh, the, the ten foolish virgins five that were wise and five that were foolish okay because that time is coming where the word the family of the word is coming and all these people are going to be running to the men of the Lord and let me prove let me back it up with scripture right before I go into it but let me finish Exodus 17 verse 3 it says and the people thirst there for water and that's what's soon coming and people are going to be thirsting for the word right and the people mur murmured against Moses and said wherefore is it this that thou has brought up us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst people are going to be so hungry for answers man oh my phone people are going to be so hungry for answers people are going to be wondering please God just what's going on with the world please show me the answers please help me it's going to be so rare to hear this word man it's going to be so rare to hear this this video is going to be so rare to find it's going to be so hard to find man that the time is going to be up man it's going to be so hard to hear the truth the true gospel it's going to be so hard to find okay and moses cried unto yahweh saying what shall i do unto these people they be almost ready to stone me. They're going to want to kill someone for the answers. Here's the book of Amos, chapter 8. Starting at verse. Uh, sorry, it's for like one second. Amos 8 verse 11 says Behold the days come saith the Lord Power that I will send a famine in the land Not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water But of hearing the words of the Lord Yeah that's what's soon coming man They're going to be wandering to and fro To seek the word of Yahweh Hashim man They're going to be wandering to and fro To seek the word of the Lord man It says and they shall run from sea to sea 
and from the north even to the east, they shall run to and fro to seek the word of Yahweh and shall not find it. And that's what's coming. People are going to be running to and fro to seek the word of Yahweh Shimei and Shai and not find it. People are going to be running trying to seek this, this truth. But what's going to happen? They're not going to be able to find the word, man. And that's what's soon about to take place. Okay. Verse 13 in Amos chapter 8. In that day shall the fair virgins and the young men faint for thirst. You know, the, the youth are going to be hungry for answers. All right. They that swear by the sin of Samaria and say, Thy God, O Dan, liveth, and the manner of Bathsheba liveth, even they shall fall and never shall rise up. All these religions that they have is going to fall because all these belief systems are going to confound people, man. All these belief systems of believing in all these different uh, ideologies and philosophies is going to confound people. People are going to be uh, in these different religions and they're going to come to a conclusion that their religion was a lie, that it wasn't the truth. That's why it says in uh, Jeremiah chapter 16, starting at verse 19, it says, Oh, Yahweh, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction. The Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. That's what people are going to be like, shit, man, you know, what I believed in was a lie. The Muslim religion, the, the, the Catholic belief system, the Trinity, it's all a lie. That's how people in the system are going to be. They're going to realize that their uh, religion was, uh, was um, a Ponzi scheme. They're going to come to a conclusion that their belief system was a Ponzi, that it wasn't something legitimate. That's what they're going to come into a uh, conclusion with, man. You know? Yeah? I'm preaching the gospel of God. I'm teaching that um, this place is going to be destroyed by thermal nuclear missiles. Okay? And that the Israelites, God's people, and the so called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. If this place is going to be destroyed. Because there's going to be an abduction. There's going to be people that are going to escape uh, the uh, nuclear missiles you know, that's coming. They're going to get beamed up into the air. Do I feel what? It's not people and fear in people's heads, that's the truth. The truth is something that is pure, something that is is, uh, is honest, okay? And the truth of the matter is that this place is going to be destroyed according to the scriptures, okay? You, okay. I, I don't know the rule of the Bible. Okay. I don't think you should give the a chance, man. It's not me, it's not my duty to give people a chance. It's the most high is the one that's going to bring the destruction. It's not fair. It's not there to pay for worship. Well, that's what the Lord said. Let me let me read it in scriptures, right? I want to learn. Okay, it says uh I can't get too much involved with him, man. Alright, this is uh let me read this real quick. That's what it says. It says uh Second Peter chapter three, starting at verse ten says but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. So the Lord's day is going to come as a thief in the night. It's going to come unexpectedly. Okay. It says, in which the heavens shall melt away with a great noise. All right. So what's that great noise? That noise is the missile that's going to come, right? And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. What's the elements melt with fervent heat? Those missiles are going to melt, you know, uh, the buildings. Tell the Pope, man, 
standing here, the Bible says, wherever they hear, wherever they forbid, you know? And also, as well, um, you know, yeah, but the thing is that the Bible says, wisdom cry out in the streets. She uttereth her voice in the streets. So I'm commanded by the Most High to uh, warn the people of what's coming. You know, and tell them that uh, terrible times are coming. Uh, it's up to them to decide whether they want to hit this and hear. No, I'm not here to convince them. I'm there to, to warn them. And those that adhere to the message, they will repent. And those that don't adhere to the message will perish. Who? But do you know God is a so-called black man according to the scriptures? Does he have to be? No, that's what the Bible says. The Bible says God is a so-called black man. Let me get it in the scriptures, right? Okay. This is what it says. Uh, Revelation chapter 4, starting at verse 3, it says, And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. So do you know what color a jasper and a sardine stone is? Okay, let me show you how a jasper and sardine stone looks like, right? So a jasper and a sardine stone. Have you ever read the book of Thomas? No, but I listened to the Apocrypha, but not the book of Thomas and uh well this is the color of a jasper and a sardine stone right here. Okay, and that's what the Bible says. The Bible says there's a jasper and sardine stone. So when I go right here, jasper and sardine stone, it says, and there was a rainbow round about the throne in the sight like onto an emerald. So you can see right there that um, that's the color of um, God, man. God's color is like the color of a jasper and a sardine stone. So the Messiah. Well, if you read Revelation, it goes into detail because Revelation reveals the actual uh, color of how God's Son looks like. So this is Revelation chapter 1, starting at verse 1. It says, The revelation of Yahweh Shai Mashiach, which the world pleasingly calls of Jesus Christ. It says, Which God gave unto him to show unto him sir, his servants things which must surely come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So this basically shows you the revelation of the Messiah, how exactly he looks like. So verse 13 is gonna go into depth on how the Messiah looks like, right? So verse 13 says, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one light unto the Son of Man. Right? The Son of Man is another title for God's only begotten Son. It says, clove a garment down to the foot. So he was wearing a garment all the way down to his feet. Right? It says, and girt about the paths of a golden girdle. That's talking about a, a belt that he was wearing, right? It says, sorry, there's an insect still on me. It says, his head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. So he has white woolly hair and a white woolly beard. No, but it looks like wool, sheep uh, texture. No, but your hair texture is not like a, like a sheep. My hair texture is like a sheep. You know, but, you know, he, God, the Messiah's hair is, um, let me see if I can type the picture. Of him. But you could be a Israelite if you, if you repent and adhere to the word of God. Huh? Okay, what's God's name then? No, it's Yahweh. I know you don't know everything, but I'm just telling you the correct name is uh, Yahweh, and his son's name is uh, Yahweh Shai. Okay, and this is the uh, true depiction. I'm not saying the Messiah accurately looks like this, but uh, he should look somewhat like this. I'm not saying he accurately looks like this, but I'm just saying that this is a more accurate depiction than uh, what they show in uh, today's society. You know, this picture right here is uh, more accurate than uh, what they show inside today's uh, society, man. So yeah, do you know what the mark of the beast is? And what's the mark of the beast? It's flashing icon. What? The false flashing icon. No, the mark of the beast is the RFID uh, microchip, which I'm going to get a picture of it. 
And basically there's thousands of people in Sweden that are actually taking this uh, this uh, microchip. Okay, this is it right here. How do you feel about nine How do we how do I how feel? Do uh, I feel like it's a uh, Bible prophecy and it has to happen and at the end of the day I have to just be strong and hope that God gives me the strength to uh, overcome um, this time because there will be a time where this system will turn cashless No, I don't need to go to Speaker's Corner I'm not here to debate and to argue with people and have a back and forth, you know which, which there's already Hebrews like the Speaker's Corner already they've already taken that spot so I'd rather stand here. No, no, I, I'd rather not go to Speaker's Corner. I'd rather, you know, stand here and uh, speak God's word. It's been very nice to meet you. Yeah. You have a corner, you know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. You are the young man. It's Yeah. Who's the old Pharisee? Pardon? Who's the old Pharisee? Well, who's the old Pharisee? Who's the old Pharisee? Well, I, I can't recall who that is. You already have a call. Yeah, definitely, man. Many are called, but few are chosen. But um, I hope you have a wonderful day, man. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, man. Yeah. You start saying. That's it, man. Yeah. Find out where you were before God to go uh, wherever. Yeah, yeah. I wonder what it was so you know what it is, don't you? You know it. Nice. Yeah, nice to meet you, man. So, so yeah, man. Um, take care. Take care, man. So, anyways, it's, it's time for um, you Israelites to repent, man. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. And at the end of the day, um, you know, and he could he could have been in Israel. He never, he never came uh, disrespectfully, so it's all good. But at the end of the day, you know, um, you know, I still believe that slavery is still coming uh, for the other nations. You know, because that's going to be the only way that the kingdom of heaven is going to be established. We're going to need uh, slaves, man, in the kingdom of heaven. So, you know, there's going to be a time where the Lord is going to use, um, you know, the nations to build up the kingdom, the palaces. Okay, but as of now. You know, we're meant to focus on the hurdles which we're approaching, and one of the hurdles that we're approaching is um, the MLTB. Okay, that's something that, you know, we got to uh, fight against, man. So anyways, um, I hope this video um, has really been edifying. I could go on for hours and hours of speaking, but, um, you know, this is how much the spirit got me going. But uh, I hope this video is edifying to you, uh, brothers and sisters. Um, so, with that, I'm going to give all infinite praises, honor, glory to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Waha, Racha Kodash, Shalom to the hopeful elected nation of Israel. I hope this video has been edifying to you, uh, Akim, and to you, Akwafiam. Shalom, man. And, uh, yeah. Hope to see you guys on the next uh, lesson. So, yeah.